this lecture we will be studying about the theory of constraints theory of constraint is a very important concept in identifying and managing the bottleneck in any operation or in any process so what is bottleneck bottleneck is the most limiting constraint in any process or a system Generally, we take the process having the longest time to be the bottleneck, but this exactly is not true. Generally, the bottleneck process is the process which is taking the longest time in the manufacturing or in transport or in any process. But sometimes uh, bottleneck is also the process which is taking the maximum cost or so it is also sometimes the process which is the most complicated one or even the process which is outside of our control. So generally, if the process is not exactly within our control or if we cannot change the different aspects of the process as per our will, then probably that step in the process is our bottleneck. The bottleneck may be man, machine or the material. The theory of constraints was developed by Dr. Eliyahu Gorat and he developed the five step process in identifying and mitigating the bottlenecks. And also, as I mentioned before, it identifies ways to eliminate the bottlenecks. Before learning those five steps, let us summarize the theory of constraints. Theory of constraints is a five step continuous thinking process which helps to identify the bottleneck and ways to overcome or eliminate the bottlenecks so that the maximum output can be generated. So, in the theory of constraint, our main focus or the main target is the elimination of the bottleneck and also it is a continuous process the first step is identifying the constraint this is the step where we identify what the bottleneck is as i mentioned before bottleneck may be man machine or material or process taking the maximum time or maximum cost and which is generally not in our control the second step is exploiting the constraint where we see whether the bottleneck is operating in its maximum capacity. If it is not running or operating in the maximum capacity, we try to change the process so that the machine comes to operate in the maximum capacity. The third step is subordinating everything else to the constraint. This is generally the communication part where we communicate about the bottlenecks to all the subordinates. And uh, fourth stage is elevating the constraint. That means in this process, we try to minimize or eliminate the bottleneck. That means we may try to decrease the time or we may change the machine, man, material, etc. so that the bottleneck is minimized. And the fifth stage is finding the next constraint. As I mentioned before, the theory of constraint is a continuous improvement principle. And so once one bottleneck is identified, there might be the possibility of improving another problem let us suppose we are trying to find and eliminate the bottlenecks in the pizza production process the first step in this process might be going to the shop and buying all the ingredients step two might be assembling together all the parts of the pizza and then baking or making the pizza so there are three steps suppose the first step that takes 10 minutes the second step takes two minutes and the third step takes five minutes so naturally here if our objective is decreasing the time, then our bottleneck is obviously the step number one. First of all, we see what's taking the longest time and obviously the transportation or your activity of going to the market to buy the ingredients of the pizza might be the bottleneck here. But suppose if all the three steps, that means step one, two and three, if they are taking similar time, suppose that they are all taking five minutes, then we should see what is not under my control. Obviously, going to buy the pizza ingredients is under your control. Making the pizza ready to bake or step number two is in your control. But the final step three might not be in your control. That means you may not be able to bake as fast as you want because it ultimately depends upon the capacity of the machine itself. And suppose in some machines, you may not be able to take out the pizza unless the pizza is ready seems like the third step is not under our control so obviously while trying to identify the constraints we have to see these two points so what's taking the longest time and what's not under our control in this particular example suppose we found out that the pizza baking machine has to be changed or we can buy the new pizza baking oven or we can bake two pizzas at a time so that at the end of the process we can get two pizzas instead of the one pizza so ultimately it will decrease the cost of operation and the time of manufacture of the pizza or as i mentioned before we can make certain changes in the pizza machine if that's possible or we can buy a new machine this is just an example and finally, we go to check if there are other bottlenecks. 
So there may be various kinds of bottlenecks. Bottlenecks may be financial bottlenecks, manpower bottlenecks, process bottlenecks, regulatory bottlenecks, technology bottlenecks, and decision bottlenecks. Any of these points given on the screen can be your bottleneck of the process, and you apply the theory of constraints to identify the bottleneck and to mitigate or eliminate the bottleneck. Let us see a case study. Suppose you are a small manufacturer of the handmade caps that manufacture caps and distribute locally. First step is designing the cap. Suppose we take 30 minutes. The second step is selecting color and necessary materials for the cap, which takes one hour. And suppose the third step is making the handmade caps, which takes about three hours. And the step four is packaging the cap lots, which takes about 15 minutes. Suppose your market grows and you cannot just be all manual. We redesigned the cap to make it 15 minutes. We set the computer operated machines for cap production, which took 25 minutes. And after redesigning the process, the packaging time took two minutes. So we identified that our main bottleneck is the time itself. So continuously applying theory of constraints, we saw that the main constraint behind the process is the time itself. And the responsible thing that affected the time was our operation procedure itself because we were manual. So we went to automation and thus we changed the manufacturing process and we reduced the constraint or our time of manufacturing of the caps. But suppose let's take a different scenario. The design of the cap takes 25 minutes and also the computer operated machine for the cap production also takes 25 minutes. So in this particular case, we cannot judge time as our bottleneck. There is a possibility of the next bottleneck. So what might be the next bottleneck? The bottleneck between these three steps is anything that is not under our control. For example, if designing the cap is not under our control, then that particular process can be a bottleneck or we can also see which of these steps is more in our control if the design of cap is more in our control then it is not the bottleneck and if there is any question you can revisit this lecture or you can even raise the question and i'll be much happier to help you here thank you